Alright, so what we have here is Hope is getting ready to cover the center here. Let me see this tissue real quick. I think this is like airspan tissue or something. Um, if it is, it's actually pretty good tissue. And so what, what she's done is she has doped this entire uh, structure. Now we're just gonna, she's just gonna brush um, acetone through the, the pieces of tissue to get it on there. So what we'll be doing is we'll be cutting lengths roughly to size, lay it down, and then do all that. And you don't worry about the wrinkles, as long as you can get this down reasonably tight, you can come back and you can water shrink it afterwards. Um, and it'll tighten down beautifully. And now what we've got is that we also have some uh, orange and yellow, this is the sake tissue, the, the really good stuff that, not to say airspan isn't, um, but this is what we're going to be um, using for some of the color splashes. You could cover the airplane entirely in this tissue and you can paint it after you've doped it uh, or color dope it. There are lots of lots of different options uh, so we're just kinda picking the one that, uh, the, the, that's, that we're most familiar with. Alright, so what Hope is doing here is she is getting the tissue to lay down around the corners here. So we get everything tacked down, you'll notice the tissue's a little bit loose in a few places, and we'll just water shrink that out later. Hope had a brief memory lapse. I had to remind her about the fact that this is an undercambered airfoil. So once you get like the leading edge stuck down, you want to get the spars and then go back here to the trailing edge. Um, it's recoverable since the tissue's not um, water shrunk yet but it's going to require some massaging to make it stick down on, on there and you just have to kind of rub it in along these spars to, to make it stick and probably she's going to have to put some extra dope on there and soak it through to make it stick okay we've attached the all of the middle section is covered um, I did have to go back and put some dope on. I think you still got a spot that's loose but that's okay oh, yeah. we'll get it tied down later <clears throat> but just to make sure that everything is I will, got some more. I will mention one thing I have heard of doing is taking if you've got something that's not wanting to stick down real well you can go through it and you can take a straight pin and actually poke little holes at regular intervals after you've doped this and soak CA through and get it to stick down be careful that you, as you're doing that, you don't glue your hand to the tissue. Um, never done that. Never, never, never have I done that. All right, continue. So, we will continue with the, the wingtips. They're going to be, they're not going to be white. Sorry. I know it's going to mess with some of your, your OCD, but. My OCD? No, the public's OCD, the pu maybe. That's what I mean, the public's OCD. But I've never been one to, like, cover my whole airplane with the same tissue. So. Tell us what's up. So. Um, I will put the that down and show you what I've done on the wing so far. So we have it all covered. We have uh, white and yellow on the top and then orange and white on the bottom. So. Um, I mean, this tissue paper was great. I, it actually um, covered it covered a lot neater than what I did on the uh, with the Jap tissue. So, yeah, very good job on finding that tissue. The catch is the Jap tissue shrinks down real nice, so you can hide True. all your mistakes. True. So <laughs> that is good. Yes, we haven't shrunk um, this down, so that's why it's still not. And now would be a good time to shrink it down before the uh, before we dope all of the tissue and seal it and all that jazz. Yeah. Any other comments? No. We will come back once I have a little bit more cover. Wetter than what it's supposed to be? No, it's about right. Oh. It's so. all, it looks all wrinkly and stuff because it's soaking wet and droopy. And now a miracle is going to occur between now and the next time you see it, because it's going to look amazing. Okay, so what are we what are we doing here? Okay, so I am uh, in the process of covering the nose block, 
But as you can see over there, we have a nicely covered stab and rudder. Still wet from the wet first from spraying. spraying. You can see this is tightened up real nice. And we went and we sheeted in some on the, the fuselage part of covering that. And that'll be for dethermalizer mounts. So. Basically, the nose block is almost covered, just finishing up this last side, and then we'll be ready to do the fuselage. Hi! So, um, just to tell you what we've done since we last videoed, is I took some thinned out dope and um, put it all over the plane, just kind of waterproof it. Um, so that way, when it gets stuck on a tree, because <laughs> we all know it's not if, we know it's when, um, it will survive just in case there's a heavy dew or A rain. thunderstorm. Rain. So. Alright, so the first thing I would suggest you do, honey, is poke, oops, poke holes all the way down here and here for your sub films. Just like where the join. Yeah, all the way. No, I'll, just all the way down the, the bottom of that rib. That's my technique for attempting to get it to stay put. And the thing of mine always, mine never did break off. So I guess uh, I did decently. They turn you the um, I can't remember who it was, or somebody said that they felt like the cylinder was designed by committee because the uh, wing was facing one way and the staff was facing the other. thing we have to do is put a little notch on the front of the stab to notch into there. I guess I should knock out some of that tissue. It doesn't really matter. It'll take it out. Yeah, go ahead and glue that on the, I said, just ahead of that stab or spark or yes. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Tight. 
stop, stop, stop. The next thing is I need to get a drill while Hope um, glues her rudder on. Vertical fin thing. So you put a little pin in the back here uh, for the rubber band for the horizontal stab. floating around, which is entirely possible. And, um, this is what happens when it takes, what, six months or so to build this thing. You lose, you might lose parts, especially when you have a, I was gonna say a little, toddler running around. Little fingers, a uh, three, now four-year-old kleptomaniac. So what I've done is sharpen this to a sharp point, and what you want to do is put glue in that hole and then press it on in. Right here? No, back there. Oh. This is the one that will go up front. Okay. I'm going to leave about half of it sticking out. Almost done gluing things on this airplane. Press it on the table if you have to. Got 
two more of these pins. There's actually a third one floating around that we're not going to use um, because we're going to put a metal rear peg on there. And we'll be right back. Okay, so Hope is cutting out the uh, tissue for the windows. Um, we've got a couple of paper patterns that we cut out just by holding up um, paper to the side of the airplane. Thin plastic will go in place. A lot of competitive folks like to just put black tissue over there so it looks cute but doesn't have any plastic in it. Yeah, I don't know that it makes a difference either way. Um, we shimmed the tail so it's attached and all that jazz. Um, and I don't know where I dropped the nose block. It's in there. Yeah. So, for the nose, uh, your block does not come pre-drilled. I kind of wish it did, but um, what you want to do is, is drill for this thrust button. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to hit this with a drill press. I've got a drill bit that's about that right diameter and I'm going to try to drill this for a couple degrees of down and right thrust and we'll see where that goes. Alright, so Hope has used glue stick to stick the uh, patterns down onto the uh, plastic. And then you can cut it out from there. Um, the glue stick washes off with water afterwards. I went upstairs and drilled this, and the way that I drilled it was I took this, um, since I want my nose block let me see if I can show you this. So this is the bottom. I want the no, no, the bearing pointing off this way, so to the right, and then I also um, I want it pointed down. So what I did is stuck a shim under here like so. So on the bottom right of the nose block, and so I can then drill straight down into that, and that gets me a few degrees of down and right thrust. And then my bearing or hope sparing in this case, just slides right in. to check how to see that the propeller shaft cooperates somewhere. The prop shaft actually fits a little tightly. I don't like that. Okay, that's not so good. Some of that is glue, so that's partly my fault. Alright, uh, go ahead and use CA to... Yeah, what's that? I put the... Yeah, the windows go on the outside.
So y'all get to see me on camera blaming Ripmax for the prop shaft not fitting, only to find out it's because I dripped CA into the bearing. This is probably not the best way to glue canopies down, but it's the way I've always done it. In fact, I know this is not the best way to do it. RC56 canopy glue, which I have none of. Nor have I ever. We'll come back when we've got all our bearings attached. Alright, so Hope has all the windows on the airplane and is looking for a pair of pliers to put her, bend her wheel on, although I think we may just use a collar for that. Um, I am reaming out the propeller bearing because we're going to have to fly this thing on a 1 16th inch propeller shaft eventually anyway. Um, because we'll probably be flying on 12 strands of 1 8th or something like that to get a proper climb. I did have to ream out this propeller to fit the uh, supplied propeller shaft. It was, it fit, but with great amounts of friction. So, and the prop shaft is a little bit short, not too bad, but that's about how much you have left out the back. So, um, I will go get a piece of aluminum tubing for that. This is my technique for securing wheels that I want to be able to remove later. Piece of 332nd aluminum tubing. Drop it into place, leave a little bit of give. Crimp it. It's still loose, so hit it with CA. And if you will demonstrate putting that in for the first time. Okay. But it's complete. And there we go. And I'm going to dim the prop shaft there. That's going to have to come down a little bit more. And there's a completed propeller assembly, after which it will be tremendously nose-heavy. No, other way. There you go. Very cool. Now we should put the wing on. Rubber bands for the wing. It's in here. I'll be nice and do this. If you can chase it all down. Overkill or change out to something thinner the first opportunity. It's not gas powered, it doesn't need romance that strong. I'm always afraid I'm going to break something when I use rubber bands that are that tight. CG at present is about 50% cord, which is much too far forward, but looking nice. All right, we'll get it set up for a rubber motor. Okay, time for fittings and stuff. So I made a piece of 1 8 inch aluminum tubing to go through at the back here while I drop hopes propeller assembly on the ground, and so that slides in like so. 
Um, then I cut a piece of quarter inch, that's probably overkill, quarter inch uh, aluminum tubing that is slightly shorter than the width of the fuselage right here and use pliers to just flare the ends of this out because the rubber band is going to go around that and, and you don't want it to slip off. So we will, in keeping with this being a review, we are going to use the supplied rubber for at least a couple of flights and get it all out of here and I'll strand it up. This hope's not used to playing with big, big motors. I think this is the most powerful thing you've uh, flown. Yes. So. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, these Pacific Ace is smaller, they don't use nearly as much power. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tie the end. Maybe. before we get too far into this. Actually, no, this is a good step point. So you stop and lubricate the rubber before we go any further because this is where you start cutting your piece of rubber up. And since they only supply you with one of these, you kind of want to do it right the first time. And this is just... Um Dow Corning 33, but anything that you normally use for lube, um, you can also use Armor All or... Yeah, I will say, um, for big rubber models, this is the, in my opinion, is the only game in town. Because it's real thick, so it doesn't splatter. And on big rubber models, Splattering lube on the tissue inside the airplane is not an acceptable anything. Adds weight and destroys the tissue. Alright, so this is going to be grossly overpowered because this is not stretchy rubber and that's not a particularly large propeller for this. So we're just going to do two strands. I think they say to do or sorry, four strands, two loops. I think they say the strand... Oopsies, Caleb. Everything going tumbling. I think they say to strand it into three, which is about right, but... Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, hope if you will hold that end, I'm just going to use the prop assembly to break this up. Uh, can you tension that one more? No, no, no. Yeah, there we go. Lamest way ever to braid. But it works. I should just use a regular winder. Itself here, so I don't lose the correct end of it. And then, stick this guy just a little bit more. And the last thing is, I need to go find a little bitty rubber band to secure that. We'll be back in a minute. Alright, I uh, hope you 
is getting ready to go outside. I am taking a little rubber band like this, and all I'm doing here is attempting to loop this over here. And so the purpose of this is just to keep those two strands bound together like that. Now this is a stuffer stick. That's a, a stuffer stick that is probably significantly older than me. And get this about right here. So the purpose of this is to latch that in like so. And now and slide this down inside my fuselage and capture it. So. There we go. Ah! Come out here, you. Alright, so per the same old braiding shenanigans, maybe we'll load this guy on and crank in a few turns as our goal is for this to tension itself out. Terms. And wait for it to unwind, grade itself up. Bingo. And now we check the CG, and the CG is about 70% cord, maybe 65, which is actually pretty close to where you want it. It's not bad. Alright, there you go, honey. Bro. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.